Hey folks, John Bernakovich here with All Points Design. It's allpointsdesign.ca. Today we're talking about the Oregon State University Permaculture Design Template. Specifically, we're taking a look at the cross section and how to make a cross section. Now, as I've said in the previous tutorials, I'd be much happier working with pen and paper. I just find it's easier to use and using grid paper in that way. But because we've got the incredible template that is the Google Slide template, we are working with the tools that we have and they're not always the best tools, but they do help us to design a cross section. So first and foremost, I took my sketch from my previous uh, tutorial and I brought it in here, made it a little bit smaller just so I can reference it. It's got all my heights and everything I need. And then what I did is I went back into editing the master slide. So again, file, edit master. And once I got into the master slides, I brought in these templates. So I've put a number of grids and scales into the master template. So if you go over to the master, you'll see that on slide 112, or at least as it is now, basically after these other ones, there'll be four different templates. Feel free to grab those. You can hold on to them or just copy the entire slide and bring it into your slideshow. But with those, you can then take them and put them into your master slide. Now in the master slide, they're probably going to be too big or too small. So what I did is I went back to my drawing. I said, great. I'm starting at zero meters or zero units. If you're working with feet, fantastic. This is the same either way. Feel free to work in imperial or metric. Just make sure it's the same throughout your assignment. So at A, we're starting at zero and at B, uh, we're getting to about 20 meters. So I need to have 20 meters or 20 squares in here. So that's exactly what I did. I went back into the master, edit master, and took my big grid that started off like this, double clicked on it, and then just cropped it into the size I needed it, cropped it in uh, from below, or I can do it from above, that's fine too click off of it, bring it back up. Basically, I moved it around to make sure it was the same size I needed, and this is what I ended up with. Then when we close this and go back to our active slide, now I can create a new slide. So again, right-click, new slide. And then all I have to do is right-click again, apply layout, and then I can go to my grid that's on the bottom. Grid close-up, that's the one I used. Awesome. So now I've got that ready to go. I don't need that slide. Uh, well, we'll keep it up for now. Next, what I do is I start to lay out and start to use what I have here for numbers. So if this is two meter, I'm going to call this zero. So you could mark it if you wanted. You could put in a little zero there. You could either um, put a text, but I just uh, saw that as zero, five, 10, 15, and then two feet in, or pardon me, two meters in, I just drew a line. So all I did here was two feet in, clicked on my line button, two feet in, or two meters in, created a line. Now, how high does that line go up? You're going to have to go back and make sure you got it. So that line's going to go up to 4.27. So that's all I did. I brought it over, took it to 4.27 or thereabouts. It's a little low, but that's all right. And made sure that the house peak came up to 5.5, which is what I had on my measurements. Next, I took a look. Okay, the balcony's 3.5 out. So I went to 3.5 out. Great. Drew another line. And the top and the bottom, 2.44, 1.22. So the bottom comes up, 1.22, drew a line, 2.44. So all I did here is I took that line, that existing line for the house, turned it to eight points so I could see it. Clicked on another line, went up one, 1.22, went out to 3.5, thereabouts. If you hold shift, it'll be totally straight. So that's another nice little tip there. And then the other one, what was that again? Uh, 2.44. So then I took another line. I went to 2.44, uh, 2.44, came out again to 3.5. Great. Now, of course, we can't see those too well because they are, um, they just come in the way they are. So I can just copy that. And now 3.5, which one of these is better? I can also zoom in. Great. So zoom in like that. That's about good. Put in another line. Holding shift makes it flat. Perfect. And it actually kept the sizing. Great. So I click off of it. If I'm really persnickety, I can really make sure it's perfectly straight, but that's good enough. 
And that's all I did to build this is I just went line by line and just built out everything. The squiggles, you can bring in shapes, objects, you can bring in all clip arts. I just like practicing drawing all the time. So all I did in this situation, let's make sure we put some, some ground on there. So we'll take another and the ground goes from, let's just make sure we know where it ends. Ground ends at 10 meter. That's where the sidewalk picks up. So I'm just gonna make sure that that's the case as I'm doing here. So make a line, we'll go out to 10 meter. Great, hold shift. It comes in, turn that a nice shade of green. Now it's a lawn and turn it a nice weight of eight. Ah, great, awesome. And I might move that up just a bit using my arrow keys. Super. Now, when we go to this element, when we're trying to put in plants, um, I like to have everything on my uh, cross section be green and alive. Anything behind, I like to make gray, like this um, pine back here. And anything in front, I like to do black. So Rosa Rugosa and the uh, Syringus vulgaris. Uh, so that's just my color code. You choose what you like, but I do like drawing my own. So I know that this is right on the five mark. So what I did is I picked up my scribble went to the five mark and basically came up and just kind of drew the shape of the mungo pine. It's also nice just to get a little drawing in there. And here's the thing about the squiggle. Every once in a while, I won't do it for you. So I'm gonna do it again and give it a little bit more space at the bottom so that way it thinks it's a real shape. Do this again, great. Gonna come out here and then come down at an angle and <laughs> I'll try one more time. Uh, of course, when I'm doing it for the tutorial, it doesn't want to do it the way it wants. So we'll try one more time. Here we go. We're getting lots of shape now. So let's, yeah, super happy. It also brought in these really interesting lines. Of course. Okay, uh, apparently fourth time's the charm. We're going to try one more time here. A little mungo pine. And, ah, bravo. Gonna turn that to a nice bright green, gonna turn that to an eight, and voila. And then all I did was just use this exact same image, took it over here for my shrub, shrunk it down to a size that made sense, did the same thing to bring it over. Once that was all done, I then brought in text boxes. Uh, one of the things that we ask for is to have, sh to make sure that we understand where all the heights are of everything. So it allowed me to label everything, house peak, house eaves, put in all the labeling and the heights, make sure to put in your units. So I'm working in meters, so I put in meters. And then below, this is a great opportunity just to talk a little bit about what you're seeing. So I put in uh, elements from my microclimate map, brought my microclimate map over, just kind of took a look where that line went through and said, okay, yeah, that's about there to the Mungo is our warm, hot, sunny, dry. And then we've got our hot, sunny, dry. And all I did was bring in uh, a couple of boxes. So a couple of shape boxes, just like this shape, and then drew out the section that it was, and then just turned it the right color and brought in the text. Next, I put vertical lines to show where these things ended and then put horizontal arrows. And the way we do the arrows, if we haven't done that before, is just click on the arrow, draw an arrow. Here it comes in. Now the arrow will have two endpoints, a right and a left. I want the two endpoints to be the same and then an eight. And then I just dragged it over here, hold the shift so that way it's totally flat and dragged it out to either side, just like that. Brought in another shape file, made sure that I labeled it. So now we can know that we've got the, the house, house and side yard, front yard, main area for cultivation, side yard and gutter and road. Now, what you can do first or last, in my case, I did it last, is I brought in an image of my base map and then made sure that I had where my cross section started and ended, my A to B, and then brought in A to B just to make sure that it was accurate. So this is the cross section and this is the section we're working on. You can see here that I actually don't have the full image. That's okay. We know that it's just road, makes good sense. So gutter and road. Finally, I changed my title block. So you'll you'll recognize that my title block is normally in a portrait uh, orientation. Now I turned it into a, just a bottom title bar. Made sure that my compass rose was in there and this is facing due north. So totally fine on that. Um, that looks really good. 
and then brought in my uh, scale bar from my map. So all I did here was just bring in my scale bar, copied that, bring it in here. Oops, bring it in here. <laughs> that was one of my drafts. And then I just stretched it out to the size that I needed it. So took it and then took it all the way to 10. And then it automatically looked really good. And then just brought in my one meter, five meter and 10 meter, making sure to label those. And that's the end of the cross section. So now that I've got this cross section, I have an idea about where other plants are gonna go, where I have lots of space, where there's maybe some elevational changes. I have an idea where the gutters are and all the rest of it. And normally what I'll do when I finish up is I'll just make sure that I bring these edges right to where the end of this is, just to make sure I'm cleaning up a bit. If you want, you could color them in, but really this is, the, this is what we need. And now at the end of everything, all we have to do is right click, apply layout, and then just go to title slide. And there we go. We've completely lost the background. We've gained a, we've gained a, uh, uh, another page slide, but that's fine. We can delete that. And now it's very clean and clear and really easy to see. And so if you want to do multiples of these, fantastic. You're more than welcome to skip just doing the over section like this. If you want to put it just directly on the slide as I have, feel free to. Uh, it's, you don't have to do both, but if you'd like to, you can, especially if you're doing multiples and we'll see you in the next tutorial. If you like this tutorial, feel free to like, and subscribe or leave a comment below and we'll see you in the next one. All the best.